All right, so first of all, let's get started. Welcome everyone for another quarterly update on the storage provider uh, working group. Uh, this is a quarterly update that we provide back to the ecosystem of storage providers um, of all the activities that we have been working on in the last quarter. Um, every quarter we provide a quick update on what we've been working on, what are uh, current statuses of the network, obviously some spotlights. So for this, uh, this presentation today, we decided to add some spotlights, uh, major highlights of what we think is important for anyone uh, who's out there in the ecosystem. We have some deep dive uh, specifically on metrics, Falcon Network metrics uh, delivered by Starboard. And then we have a new program as well that we want to announce, uh, which is around, Evergreen, it's called Evergreen of Falcon.io for any storage provider out there that is looking to uh, store deals. Um, so we have a new program there that will help you with that some case studies, marketing and events, and then uh, talk a bit more about what's next. Okay, so last quarter, um, one of our top priorities was obviously we continue to uh, uh, focus on expanding the network in new regions and countries, enable the ecosystem through incubation centers and boot camps, uh, onboarding new enterprise customers onto the platform, and grow staff supporting our storage provider ecosystem. The results of last quarter is that we've uh, now reached more than 4,000 storage provider systems or minor IDs, we released the first virtual bootcamp uh, with our uh, ESPA, uh, which is now active. And uh, we are actually going to the second cohort. John will talk about that. We'll recruit five, our goal was to recruit five and build capacity for 15 SB accelerator seats per quarter. We now have our second cohort, we'll have 15, and we're open to new accelerated programs uh, as we go. We onboarded, actually, now uh, we're already at 50 million. And this is the problem with making these slides is that if you're Making the slides to the answer even day in advance, it grows on us every single day. If you want to see the stats, you can go to nft.storage slash stats. But we're actually more than 50 million NFTs today and 16 Abbey bytes of capacity, which is amazing. And, and we have um, 92 applications so far for Project Gravity. Remember, we started this project as a way to create case studies. Uh, we have some very healthy funnels, so please keep them coming. Uh, very supportive of making more case studies. We actually have a few that we're going to list today and establish a storage provider working group in Japan and Korea. Okay, so these are stats, 16 Ebibytes, uh, more than 4,000 minor IDs. We have 51, uh, well, 51.1 million NFTs. Okay, well, uh, you blink and uh, you're behind, right? So 2.4 million deals, uh, uh, deals have been made up till now um, and we're up uh, in the last two weeks. Everyone will have seen this. Um, you'll see it in the dashboard as well. So from Starboard and 55 Pebby bytes of uh, useful board on the network. Okay, so uh, this is another graph. As you can see, this uh, the graph keeps growing. Um, obviously, our goal is to not just onboard more capacity, but more quality uh, SPs, meaning SPs that are taking deals. And so for next quarter, we want to be focusing on uh, SPs, uh, enabling more SPs to accept uh, accepting deals and make the deal process uh, easier. Um, Regarding uh, the petabytes, the total petabytes of capacity stored uh, on the network, oops, as you can see here, um, the graph has been going up. Um, we've also seen this across the board. This is not just a US, North America or China or a uh, uh, very specific region. This is across uh, the world. We're seeing an increase in, uh, as you can see, the green Falcon plus deal. So this is a, a side effect too of like us unlocking some of the data cap that's uh, been handed out. The notaries have done an amazing job and will continue to add more capacity to keep those opportunities uh, coming um, because uh, we are ready to uh, store all that useful data. Um, as we said, NFTs, we continue to go up. If you want to see the latest stats, go to nft.storage slash stats um, and you'll see at least all the NFTs that are stored on nft.storage we know of um, that those are listed there. There's also a ton of NFTs that are not stored through NFT storage. So in reality, we probably have more NFTs stored on our network. Um, we still have amazing use cases and we continue. Um, just to want to reiterate, we have NFT use cases with uh, NFT, TFI, uh, Curio, Digital. So we have a ton of um, marketplaces like OpenSea and others that are storing their NFTs on our platform, which is amazing. Uh, we have metaverse and games, uh, which is another uh, big use case. In general, we see ton more gaming uh, platforms using Falcon as well as a backend. And we're seeing um, video and audio use cases across the board. Uh, these are platforms that are building decentralized uh, ways to enable uh, artists right, with their own tokens or give them back control essentially to their assets, which eventually then get stored on um, 
on, on Falcon as well. So we have Huddle, uh, which is more like a video conferencing platform, Audius, which is a streaming platform for music and um, uh, Currents FM set of tools directly supports music communities. Again, multiple applications. And we actually have a new website where you can find all those um, applications that we'll, I'll show you in a second. Um, and then um, obviously Slate is our sync and share of uh, fleet, uh, fleet storages to make websites and pin data. And Chainsafe is also, if you're looking to replace sort of like your Google Drive, go look at Chainsafe files because they have similar capabilities uh, now built into, uh, built on top of Falcon. And then numbers, um, also a way to share photos and videos. Um, financing bio, we can we continue to see um, increased use cases there as well across the board uh, with different uh, labs and solutions. And in the Web2 environment, we, are, um, we have climate data, show of foundation as we were always talking about the climate data, more, cli more climate data sets we're seeing coming in. It's an archive, Gain Forest, which is uh, storing satellite images um, on the climate and and um, and so on. So obviously there's a lot more. We're seeing actually an increase in research data, which is awesome. Um, so we're seeing a ton of uh, interest. Now, spotlights for Q1. Um, one, um, last quarter we said we want to create more case studies to demonstrate the utility or the usage of the network. And so here's one that we came in through ByteBase. It's a decentralized, um, um, sorry, this is a, a phot photography pro uh, sharing uh, company. So basically they, they're Chinsu, if I pronounce it correctly. Um, so they're storing pictures um, and their total estimated grow is to, is to store 40 to 50 ter terabytes per month, uh, which gets you to half, uh, get half to 600 tips, a half a petabyte to 600 tips a year. So this, uh, the reason why they selected Falcon is to reduce their overall cost for long-term storage. So again, a perfect archive tier for pre data preservation of your pictures and images. Second is uh, very much in the same line. Um, it, this is a, a customer that has one Abbey byte of storage in public cloud um, and is storing a library of uh, photography, uh, illustrations, vector files. So more than just pictures, but also the you know um, other vector files that are being stored. And they're looking as well actually to uh, support, they're storing it on Falcon today and they're Again, uh, their focus was to decrease their cost and also leverage the, um, the security aspect, meaning that the, the immutability capability that uh, Falcon provide. So again, we would love to see more of these. We have a ton of those in the funnel, uh, but please keep them coming. As you know, bring them to the falcon.io slash gravity, um, and we will help you uh, create those uh, customers into or build those customers into case studies. We provide a blog, we provide support for writing up the uh, the value prop. Okay, so what, uh, what else did we release in the last quarter? We released a community roadmap. Um, Caitlin um, is on the call. I don't know if Caitlin, if you want to say a few words, um, but this has been like the first version, right? And the second is coming out soon? Uh, yeah, Stefan, that's right. Uh, so the first version was released in quarter one of this year. Uh, and the goal of this roadmap is really to track those high level programs and projects that are going to significantly change the Filecoin use case or expand overall usability. So of course, um, we still have the ecosystem project dashboard that I can link to, which charts everything going on in the Filecoin ecosystem. It's an extensive list of companies, partners, et cetera. Uh, but the Filecoin community roadmap is supposed to be a distillation, again, only of those really low layer projects and changes, um, including a lot of things that will come through as FIPS, but also including significant enhancements that different implementation teams are looking to launch, as well as some um, more novel projects that have been in the list for a while. So we are accepting uh, project submissions to the end of this week, and you should see updates to quarter two um, coming roughly two weeks in mid-April. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks. All right, and then uh, Falcon ecosystem of Falcon.io. So uh, as we mentioned earlier, there's a ton of new applications being developed. Uh, we received the request to consolidate those. And so if you want to know what use cases um, and applications or applications are built, then go to our ecosystem of Falcon.io website, browse for the projects. And from there, you can see um, what type, as you can see here, right? Uh, integrations we have for public data, for sync and share, et cetera. Um, so please have a look. If you have any project that you're working on that you want to submit, because there's so many cool projects still out there, then please you know, submit your project and we'll make sure it gets listed on this uh, new uh, ecosystem page. 
Another thing we worked on in the last quarter was a lending, uh, a series of lending programs. Uh, I think most of you already know, but we have built a uh, to improve uh, uh, access to collateral or help you to accelerate your uh, capacity growth. Um, we uh, created new programs, or, or our lenders have created new programs um, that allow a storage provider to um, get a new loan for much at, much at much less collateral requirements as before. So right now we're looking at 20% or sometimes even less. So take more fill plus deals and grow your capacity. Um, if you want to know more, go send an email to lend at pointless.co or falcon at dharma the capital and falcon at anchorage.com. You can also go to a website here for uh, from, from Coinless. Um, with me, I have John. John is from the ESPA team. Uh, John, maybe you can tell us a bit more about the current situation at uh, ESPA and talk a bit more about the bootcamp material that you guys created. Sure thing. Thanks, Safan. Um, I'm the program manager for ESPA. And if you aren't aware, we've been running this accelerator to bring SPs to the next level, uh, sharing best practices, efficiencies, and more. Uh, basically, it's a three-day uh, in-person event uh, with months of support thereafter. So we pre-recorded a lot of content, which is found on YouTube's uh, or Filecoin's YouTube. And uh, also, if you're interested in applying uh, for the accelerator, go ahead and head to uh, web3espa.io to uh, sign up and apply. Um, back to you, Stefan. Awesome. So basically, this new content of more than 20 hours of uh, videos uh, is really designed for those that are looking to become a storage provider and uh, don't know where to start. This is your uh, location. Go to YouTube and search for Falcon Bootcamp or go to this list of content m.field or slash ESPA Bootcamp contents. Awesome, thank you very much. And uh, this, is, uh, this content will be updated every quarter as we see new modules come in. So uh, looking forward to see many more of these modules. Um, Ashwan, can you tell us a bit more about Venus Hub? Absolutely, thanks, Stefan. Hey, everyone, it's great to meet you. My name is Ashwan. I work on the Storage Fighter team with Stefan. Uh, so great to meet you if I haven't met you already. So as some of you may know, Venus is one of the four implementations on Filecoin um, that specifically focus on storage providing based on a distributed structure. So similar to ESPA, uh, Venus Hub, which is coordinated by our friends over at IPFS Force, is all about bringing together different initiatives to really help people um, implement Venus. So the first option is, is online meetups. So over the last year, uh, IPFS Force has been coordinating monthly online meetups, um, whether that's an AMA or technical support or kind of just the community getting together to ask each other questions. Uh, you know, that's been going on for the last year. They're going to continue doing that uh, coming up. A really cool initiative that Venus has implemented is the Master Fellowship. So this is onboarding technical experts and, re and rewarding them in fill for helping them, for, for enabling others to learn how to use Venus and helping them with technical issues. Uh, so last year, they onboarded four masters in this program. Uh, and this year, they're looking to onboard uh, 12. Uh, and so you can, you know, be rewarded and fill for responding on GitHub, being active in community support, one-on-one um, -on -one support and consulting services, that sort of thing. A new initiative that IPFS Force is looking to implement this year is, is supporting hackathons. And the goal in these hackathons is to uh, essentially make the Venus implementation a little bit more smooth, a little bit more efficient, kind of work out some of the kinks that may exist. Um, last year, IPFS Force implemented the incubation center. So they had about 97 applicants in phases one and two. They ended up accepting 22 participants um, and they took them through this process where the goal was to onboard these SPs and, and help them you know, implement Venus. Uh, this year, the target is to onboard 50 SPs over the next 12 months. So the incubation center is not only getting larger, but is also uh, growing, uh, expanding in time. Last thing is the deal accelerator. This is a new program um, designed to encourage SPs to take more real storage deals while utilizing Venus. So this program is officially kicking off uh, end of March, which is today and tomorrow. So exciting stuff. Um, if you're interested in learning more about the Venus, uh, Venus deployment, feel free to reach out to IPFS Force and visit the website below. Thanks, Devon. Awesome, thank you. So as, uh, as you can see, we don't only support Lotus, we also support other implementations like Venus. And it looked great to see how Venus is um, following the same trajectory of enabling the ecosystem with uh, new new types of projects. And now we focus on deal accelerate, which is which is awesome. 
All right, FIPS. Uh, Caitlin, can you give us a quick update on last quarter's uh, new FIPS? And uh, floor is yours. Thank you. Thanks also for making my slide look so nice. Um, so uh, for everyone who may be following FIPS, you'll know that we currently have one draft that is in last call notice. Um, this is that final two week period where the draft is entirely complete as is. There are no more changes being accepted and we are simply opening it up for final community consideration prior to considering it for acceptance. Uh, the FIP that is currently in last call is FIP 27, change type of deal proposal label field from a Golang string to a U. Uh, this is a technicality in a lot of senses. Uh, it's a FIP that's been open for months. A lot of changes have gone back and forth in terms of the type of data structure that the team finds most useful here. But ultimately, the change was premised to help support the programmable FBM when it launches at the end of the summer. Uh, there should be no dependencies for storage providers as long as you're running an updated version of whichever implementation you choose to run. You should have all of the necessary updates to make this change easily. Um, so if you're curious to learn more, or understand why this change is being proposed, heavily encourage you to take a look at the FIP draft, but do know that there's nothing you need to be aware of uh, and you should not have any issues running Lotus, Venus or Forest uh, should this FIP be implemented. Other than that, we also have three upcoming FIPS, which will be imminently completed and ready for last call status as well. And these are the three FIPS that we're using to support the launch of the non-programmable FVM from the V16 network upgrade, which will happen mid-May. The first one is the introduction of the Filecoin virtual machine. It's more of a qualitative background, uh, describes what the FVM is, why WASM runtime was selected to support this change, uh, and describes some of the technical specifics and modular components of integrating the runtime. Uh, we also have FIP31, which is the atomic switch to the FVM. This introduces the canonical Rust actors into the network, which all implementations will begin to use. And it also suggests the formal change of the protocol execution layer at time. And then finally, we have FIP32, which is some gas model adjustments to make sure that the price um, of using the network doesn't change once the FVM is implemented. We're going through some final testing to determine exactly what these gas model rebalancing needs to look like. But again, the goal is for there to be no change on the network overall. If you are interested in following up on any of these, again, always encourage everyone to take a look at the drafts, take a look at the discussion threads, weigh in and let us know what questions, concerns, comments, or uh, statements of support you may have for any of these drafts. We are not quite certain exactly when the last call status is going to be on these FIPS because again, there are some final tweaks happening to FIP32, uh, but it is imminent. Hopefully by the end of next week, all three of these will be in their last call status as well. Um, and as a final plug, I know there's always a lot of information when it comes to Filecoin governance, but if you're looking to stay up to date or you want to just very quickly get a rundown of what's happening, we have a weekly governance um, update that are being published weekly. Uh, you can find a link to them in the FIPS forum. Uh, everyone in the Americas, they're published on Friday afternoons. Everyone in uh, Africa, Europe, Asia, or Oceania, it's going to be on Saturday mornings for you guys. A uh, quick list of all of the drafts, hot discussion topics, and where every Everything is in that workflow. So take a look, let me know what you think, feel free to weigh in anywhere. And if you have any additional questions, you're always welcome to reach out to me on Slack. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Clara, so there's a couple of few blogs that were announced last quarter. Maybe you can walk us through it. Yeah, absolutely. So um, one of the uh, key things this quarter we've been trying to focus on is having great case studies that all of you guys as an ecosystem can share out um, to really onboard clients. People want to hear good stories. And so across different regions from Europe to North America to Korea, we've been highlighting different um, different storage providers, spotlights, what we're calling it. So we've highlighted Linux, we've highlighted the work of Phil Swan, and we've also highlighted Meta Blockchain. And so um, we would love to feature some of you guys. And so if you have suggestions, definitely post them in our Slack and um, put it under the storage provider um, channel. But we would love to make sure that we can highlight the best stories from, from our community. Great. Um, one additional announcement is um, just two weeks ago, we were all at South by Southwest and it was a very packed week. 
we had a sustainable blockchain summit that started on March 13th, and then also an ongoing NFT house that took place um, throughout the week. So the NFT house then turned into a hacker house from March 14th to 15th. And we also had this event um, as part of official South by Southwest programming called the Decentralized Web Gateway. Um, on March 15th, that included an entire floor of um, really, really great discussion from the storage provider community. And so one of our goals uh, this year is to be able to offer more places of convening for the Filecoin ecosystem, um, especially for storage providers to meet and also talk to others. Um, we also hosted a number of other workshops and at like NFT school, um, a session on decarbonizing blockchains, um, also about uh, how the future of NFTs will empower creators. Um, one of the other things that happened most relevant to this group is we did have a storage provider meetup and workathon uh, on Monday, March 14th. And that was an all day workshop um, put together where people had the chance to talk about their tools. We had a chance to have a pretty candid conversation with Juan actually attending, just talking about everything from roadmap uh, to uh, other updates for how we can make Filecoin Plus better. And so Stefan and I will be reaching out to figure out our next major meetup like that. And we hope that all of you guys can have the chance to participate and attend. Awesome, thank you. Thank you, Clara. Um, and there's another slide later in the deck that shows where we can meet next. So I'll bring you back up. Uh, before we go to that, I wanted to zoom in um, and do a little deep dive on, on new tooling uh, that we've provided and uh, some amazing metrics that uh, we have brought, that we've released uh, by Starboard. Starboard is a team that's been working on analytics in general on a couple of uh, different initiatives. And this is Sylvester and his team based out of Singapore. And they've been focused on bringing new dashboards that zoom in on the health metrics of the network itself. As some of you have asked for us, like how many deals are being made, uh, how much uh, Falcon Plus data is being stored, uh, what's the total growth? Of course, there's different dashboards already today, but uh, have a look at the health metrics because it goes through the storage state, the circulating supply, which is a common question as well, the gas and the ongoing deals, and then eventually the economics. Um, and then second, um, more importantly, is like the, the ROI tool. So um, the ROI tool is now uh, observable. So we have very a lot of questions related to what is the return if I become a storage provider and how can I calculate this with all these ongoing uh, fluctuating things that are happening in the network. Um, you can simulate that now uh, with this new uh, product. It's been a while, it's been out there for a while, but now it's uh, also capable of uh, setting a price for your, uh, for your data. So if let's say, you want to do more than just calculating the ROI from your block awards, but you want to add a, or set a price for your dollars per tip of each of all the data sets that you store, you can calculate that now as well. Um, so here's some details. Um, as you can see in the last couple of months, right, our data, Falcon Plus data has grown. So you can see this very clearly in the health, uh, the health dashboard. Have a look at it. I've been sharing it with a lot of you, but um, it's kind of a really good um, single source of truth that been, that's been maintained by this, this team under our guidance. And then um, last but not least, it also has a, star, um, a, a starboard uh, focused dashboard on storage provider reputation. So here you can see for every storage provider, um, sort of like a spider web assessment on storage reliability, gas efficiency, capital, et cetera. And then you can even rank those two next to each other and verify which one has a better uh, growth or uh, better uptime or is more successful in taking deals um, if you are a customer that's looking to, to make an assessment or uh, make a decision. And then here's the analytics dashboard uh, that's focused on ROI and where you can, um, you know, as I mentioned, right, uh, scale out the growth. Uh, you can play around with the cost. You can play around with a setting a price as well for storing your data. Um, now, uh, moving on to the new programs that we're releasing. So today we uh, we're announcing a new program called Evergreen of Um And this um, uh, is uh, basically like a new program, uh, sort of a next, it's basically the follow-up of sling, slingshot repair, but this allows us to uh, repair data. Um, and as you, so basically we'll be paying for uh, RSPs to storing file, uh, file deals. And so if you go to the to this website, you'll see a list of CIDs that you can apply for. Um, and then you have a 72 hours 
time frame to actually repair that data and store it on a on your storage provider. So register, go through the KYC, and get paid and filled to um, store and replicate this data. Uh, there's a new program uh, just released this week, um, and you'll see. I think there is like 34.55 petabytes, I believe, uh, that's going to be restored. All right, um, storage provider events calendar. Claire, do you want to uh, talk us through this? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I wanted to shout out to Vanessa, um, our intern, uh, for all the hard work she put here. So we've heard from the community, and one enormous request was it's very hard to find what's going on because we have a lot going on. And so we have created this storage provider events calendar. I'm going to put the link in the chat. Um, this is a way for you to find out what's happening, what meetups are happening. Um, if you would like to propose an event, definitely coordinate with us. And you can also add events to this calendar. And so we are building out a process where it's very easy for us to support each other as a community. So uh, please check it out and um, let me know if there's any questions, but huge kudos to Vanessa and also for, for Gary for making this site look so pretty. Totally agree. Vanessa did an amazing job and turned that around very quickly. And now it's become a cornerstone for a lot of our events. So uh, really awesome to see this. I see there's some questions on chat, but Reba, you'll uh, probably help uh, those questions related to Evergreen. All right, so what's next? Um, basically, next quarter, uh, we are going to be focusing on, oops, uh, that's it. What's next? What's our focus area for next quarter? Uh, we want to grow and expand our network in new regions. We're continuing to go down that path. Um, we'll enable the ecosystem through incubation centers. So if you have opportunities, if you have ideas on how to do that within your region, let us know. We have a couple of programs that are ongoing that we couldn't announce today, but you'll see more activity in the next, uh, next quarter. We also are going to release a new landing page, uh, storage project Falcon.O. It's not live yet, but by next week or in two weeks from now, we'll be, we'll be live. Um, so the goal there was to have a central landing page for all things storage providers so we can guide customers that are interested in becoming an SP or uh, eventually also new solutions that would benefit the SP ecosystem. Um, so keep an eye open for that. Um, if you have any other ideas on how to onboard more data quick, quicker, please let us know as well because we're always looking for uh, new ideas. And then last but not least, um, and I'm looking for the slide. Uh, there we go. I'll leave it up to, to Clara to talk about our major event. Yeah, so um, as you guys know, we've been dealing with COVID for over two years now, and a lot of our meetups have been virtual. Well, we are hosting the first in-person Filecoin major ecosystem event uh, this June um, in Austin on the backbone of Consensus, which is a major conference hosted by Coindesk. And so this conference is mainly business and enterprise focused, but it's a great opportunity for us to tell the Filecoin story in our role in decentralized data storage. And we would encourage everyone to be there. We are building out um, a whole set of events around storage providers, and we would love everyone to, to be there. And we're expecting around 800 people. So if you would like to keep up with Phil Austin, um, definitely look at the link, um, stay notified. And then um, you can also reach out to Rachel from our team if you have any questions. Or if you would like to apply as a speaker, we do have speaker applications open and we would love to hear from all of you um, to, to see you guys on stage. Awesome, that's amazing. Yeah, so as I mentioned before, uh, this is, uh, we've done an event two weeks ago, as, as Flair mentioned, and it was so um, successful that we want to double down for sure in, in Austin again, uh, but this time, hopefully with even more storage providers, uh, but also enterprise customers, if you feel comfortable to bring those to the event, uh, this would be a great, um, uh, a great uh, event for to, not only to introduce, them to PL and the foundation, uh, but to other ecosystem partners as well. All right, so that's it for this um, for this quarter. Uh, thank you very much for everything you're doing. Uh, as always, uh, we've made a ton of progress and that's not because uh, we've done such a great job, it's because of all of you, because all of you have done an amazing job in helping us to get there. Every single person in this ecosystem has something unique to offer and, and that's really the power of our network. And so if you have something uh, that, you, you contribute to the network, that would be a great idea. Again, please don't hesitate to contact us because we're open uh, for anything that can help us grow and help the ecosystem as a whole. So with that, I'll say thank you everyone and we'll see you next quarter.
Great.